It's Kenichiwa Nakama, I'm your host, Local23. You're joining me for Choices, the stories you play. Freshman Book 2, Chapter 10, Ballot Boxing. Early the next morning, the wind howls as you and your roommates head to the auditorium to hear Chris's speech. As you walk, you and Caitlin tell everyone about Sebastian's visit the night before. I knew Sebastian would play dirty, but I thought he'd have the decency to wait until the race actually started. Well, if he thinks Chris can be easily defeated, he's got another thing coming. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We have two fine young men here today announcing their candidacy for school president. You and your friends quickly quiet down and turn your attention to the stage. Remember, neither student's name will appear on the ballot unless they are able to gather 100 signatures from students like you. Up first, we have Christopher Powell. Students of Hartville, I am here today because I believe everybody deserves the opportunity to receive a quality education. Every year, hundreds of students are accepted into Hartfield who are unable to attend due to high tuition prices. If I'm elected school president, I will do everything in my power to change that. Hartfield isn't just a school to me. It's a community. I hope you will join me in my mission to open our community up to all, regardless of financial situation. Thank you. The audience cheers as Chris takes a seat. Caitlin turns to you. What do you think, Mizumi? I thought Chris's speech was awesome. Not the best, really. Um, out of what? <laughs> Chris was clearly... You think Chris was... Takes a cool president. Okay. Uh, Chris was clearly thought his... Through. He'll make a great president. I totally agree. Thank you, Christopher. Up next, we have Sebastian De La Crox. Oh, boy. Several students cheer as Sebastian walks up to the podium. You hear one voice in particular above the rest. Let me guess, Becca. Go get him, sweetheart! Oh, God, I'm going to oh, throw this coffee up. Ooh. Students, when you think Hartfield University, do you picture mediocrity? Because that's where this school is headed. For the past few years, our once exceptional university has been falling further and further down behind. Do you know why? It's because Hartfield University has been squandering its funds on frivolous scholarships. For example, all a football player has to do is receive a full-ride scholarship. Here is maintain a 2.5 GPA. Sebastian gives Chris a dirty look. If I'm elected president, we will instead use that money to rebuild Hartfield's reputation for academic greatness. Who's with me? Several audience members cheer as Sebastian takes a seat, and Miss Thomble wraps up the assembly. Miss Thomble, excuse me. I think I'm gonna be sick. That makes two of us. I wouldn't much worry about it. Hartfield students are smart. It should be easy to see that Chris made a better case. What do you think about all this, Mizumi? Why, why can't you make your own goddamn opinion? <laughs> I'm feeling happy for Chris, angry at Sebastian, seriously turned on. Really? Who would pick that? Unless it was towards Chris, which, eh, happy for Chris. Tyler was right. Chris has this in the bag. I'm going to go over and congratulate him right now. You might want to tone down the enthusiasm a bit, sunshine. Caitlin points to the front of the auditorium where Chris is standing. What the fuck are you sad? Also, why do you wear the same shirt everywhere you go? Right. Oh, go talk to him. You do that. We should head back and start on the cupcakes for the campaign bake sale for this afternoon. Awesome. I'll be back to help later. As the students file out, you make your way over to Chris. Hey there. Walk with me? Chris nods. Suck it up, buttercup. You're supposed to be presidential material, not soap opera. You take a walk around the quad, where it seems like the wind has died down, at least for the time being. For what it's worth, we all agreed Sebastian shaming you for athletic scholarship was out of line. Thanks, but that's not what's bothering me. People always complain that athletes get special treatment. 
I'm used to it. So, then what's bothering you? I'm not sure I can actually do this. 100 signatures by tomorrow? That's a lot. Really? That's what you're worried about? Sure, the first five will be easy. I've got you and our roommates, but where am I going to get the other 95? Chris, you have plenty of friends. What about the football team? They're your guys. Of course they'll sign. Okay, fair. And then there's the cast from James' play. I'm sure they'll sign for you, too. And James, of course. I bet he'll sign. And then there's... Okay, okay, I get the picture. You're right, I can totally do this. You reminded Chris of all the people who love him! And we've got the bake sale this afternoon. I'm sure we'll have plenty of customers who will want to sign. That's true. Hey, Mizumi, thanks for talking some sense into me. I really needed it. Anytime. I do have one other concern, though. What is it? Sebastian looks so much more, well, presidential than I do. Would you mind helping me out? Are you asking me to give you a makeover? Would you judge me if I said yes? Ah, of course I'll do it! Come on, then this will be fun. We have to be fast, though. Zack will kill me if I don't get help him with the cupcakes. Mizumi, you're a lifesaver. Are we going back to Lulu or whatever the fuck? <laughs> no. You and Chris go to Arrows, a trendy s store in the mall that looks like the same as the last stories. See anything you like? I wonder if Cr uh, James will want to re over make over as well for whatever reason. Isn't this the girls' department? Well, personally, I think this would look very presidential on you. You hold up a little black dress. I don't think that would look good on me. Don't be silly, Chris. Little black dresses look good on everyone. Seriously, Mizumi, I need something sharp. Got any ideas? A few. A few minutes later, Chris steps out of the changing room. Well, what do you think? You look very presidential. You look like you should be sitting in an Oval Office conducting important business. Unfortunately, this particular presidency doesn't come with an office, but maybe someday? But more importantly, what do you think? Chris looks in the mirror. I think it looks perfect. Perfect. You pay for the outfit and make your way to the store exit. Could I get a time check, Mizumi? It's 12.30. Shoot! We gotta get back. Hey, I'm starved. What do you say we pick up some fast food on our way home? It sounds great to me. Will I be paying for that, too? Everybody uses me as a credit card! Damn it all! You and Chris return to your suite to find the kitchen covered in unfrosted cupcakes. Where the hell have you been? Chris, you said that we were going to work on your debate speech this afternoon. Sorry, we were shopping for a more presidential look for Chris. I can't be too mad. You look amazing. Who knew the quarterback had such a good taste? Thanks, but Mizumi deserves all the credit here. I could have never picked this out on my own. Just then, there's a knock on the door. Caitlin and Chris go to answer it. James? Hey, I was wondering if you needed a speechwriter. You know, as a thank you for helping with the play? You shoot Caitlin and Chris a desperate look. Oh, that's right, I forgot we did give him that sweater, didn't we? That's right, we already did a makeover for him. Caitlin sees it and turns to James. Wow, James, that's very nice of you. But as Chris's campaign manager... Thank you! Welcome aboard. Caitlin and I were just starting prepping for the debate. Think you could help us? Sure. Three of you pass by on your way to the roof. You pull aside... Who do you pull aside? Caitlin. Caitlin's our bae! Oh god, I never thought I'd say that word. Hey, Caitlin, can we talk? Go on, guys. I'll just be a minute. You pull Caitlin in your room while James follows Chris to the roof. I'm guessing this is about James? Yeah, I'm basically one wrong move away from a disaster here. 
I tried to get him out of here, but Chris let him in. I appreciate that, but that's why I called you in here. What if James is doing this to get back at me? Really? Helping a friend? Say no more. If I see him try anything, he's out. No matter how desperate Chris is to win. He pulled Caitlin into a quick kiss on the lips. You're the best. At kissing or saving you from jerks? I'm gonna go with both. Yes. Good answer. Now, I better get out of here before the boys start wondering what's up. Well, would it be so wrong to have a hour or two of your time, Caitlin, to make out? I just saw James is here. Is everything okay? I... I think so. Maybe? It's funny, I've been wanting to see him all week. Now that he's here, I kind of wish he would leave. Would a cupcake help? I think Chris's campaign can spare one for a worthy cause. Abby hands you a strawberry cupcake. Mmm. I feel better already. I don't know if a cupcake would cheer me up. How about a cup of coffee? As you can tell, I am obsessed with coffee. <laughs> a few hours later, James has gone home, and your friends have set up for the bake sale on the quad. Looks like we have our first customer! You spot Edgar stepping out of his dorm. <clears throat> hey, Edgar! Uh, hey, what's going on here? Chris is running for school president, and we're having a bake sale to raise funds for his campaign. I'm also collecting signatures to get my name on the ballot. If you sign your cupcake, it's 50 cents cheaper. Fascinating! And why, may I ask, should I support you in this venture? Uh, you should support Chris because he's a huge D&D &D fan. He knows what it's like to be an outcast. Shit! God damn it! I remember we have to sway people. He's a huge D and D fan. He knows what it's like to be an outcast. Let's just go with an honest answer. He'll stand up for all the students at Hartfell, not just those who are rich and popular. Does that mean you'll consider registering my Dungeons and Dragons group as an official student organization? I'll definitely consider it. I can't promise that the motion will pass, though. Edgar immediately signs his name on the sheet and puts down enough money for two cupcakes. I look forward to your presidency! Great! Be sure to tell your friends, Chris Powerful Dungeon Master of Heartfell! By the light of Ragnaroth, I shall! Oh my god, make it stop! A few minutes later, someone else passes by the booth. Oh, it's Rachel! How are you? Any cockroaches infesting the dorm lately? What's with the cupcakes? You a Girl Scout or something? Oh, we're selling them for a dollar fifty apiece. But they're only a dollar if you sign a petition for Chris Powell to be on the ballot for school president. Why should I care who's school president? Sebastian is a massive tool. Chris will fight the system. You should care about Chris will fight the system. Chris wants to make Hartfield a place for everyone, not just the rich kids. Yeah? And what's Pretty Boy going to do about it? My top priority is increasing financial aid, but a few other ideas are in the works. I'm also open for suggestions from students, so please let me know if you got any ideas. A politician who wants my opinion? That's a first. Really? What's your name? Rachel. And I guess I'll sign. I called it! Rachel signs her name and buys a cupcake. Thanks for supporting the cause! No problem. Here's your first suggestion, future prez. An on-campus rehearsal space for my band. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you and your friends get a few more signatures <laughs> over the next hour, but you're still short of your goal when you see Madison come by with a bunch of flyers. Hey, you guys. Would you mind putting this flyer up at your booth? It's for a concert on the quad this afternoon. Sure, let me look at it. Free Alyssa Griffin Concert, February 5th, 5 p.m., Hartfield Quad. Mission free for all those who endorse Sebastian De La Cruz for school president. Screw you. Oh, uh, Madison, you know we can't put this up. Because you hate Alyssa Griffin? No, Madison, because we're campaigning for Chris. 
Oh, so that's why your sign says Chris Powell for president. Well, I hope you'll come to the concert anyway. No. You? Really? Madison skips away, oblivious, because she's an idiot. That's not good. Sebastian is totally trying to draw attention away from us. I guess we're going to have to try to get any signatures as possible before the concert starts. Looks like it's a little late for that. A huge bus pulls up, followed by a luxurious stretch limo. A small crowd chases after it. Alyssa Griffin, can I get a picture with you? Sure. Madison snaps a picture of Alyssa and Becca arm in arm. Now, can I get one with... Becca leads Alyssa away from Madison. Wah, 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 wah. Wait, guys, give me a minute. I'm gonna go talk to Madison. Hey, Madison. Do you need a hug? Please and thank you. You pull Madison into a hug and pat her on the back. It was really awful how Becca blew you off back there. Are you okay? Yeah, I... Madison, there you are! I've been looking all over! Me too! Hey, is everything alright? You look sad! Yeah, guys, I'm fine. Just talking to Mizumi. Come find me in a minute. I'll be right here. Me too! Oh my god, make it stop. Looks like you've got yourself quite the little fan club. Huh? We're gonna trip our normal sized. Uh, anyway, is everything alright with you and Becca? I don't know. She's been blowing me off lately for Sebastian, and the only thing we ever talk about is the campaign. Well, Madison, maybe you should sign Chris's petition then. Why would I do that? Becca said we have to vote for Sebastian! You should, because it would be a great way to get revenge on Becca. Becca's under Sebastian's evil spell. Sebastian is a wizard? Uh, yes. It's like his campaign for president is the source of his evil power. If he loses, I bet you'll get the old Becca back. Are you sure? Like, 99% sure. That's almost a hundred! Alright, Chris is my signature! You know, you're really smart, Mizumi. Do you think I could ask you for something else? Uh, sure, Madison. What is it? What should I do about Logan and Trump? Are those two still fighting over you? I thought I was the only one who noticed! I don't know who to pick! Personally, I think that Logan sees something special in you. You and Trip will be really cute together. You should wait for someone you really want. Okay, so Logan sees something special in you. You and Trip would be really cute together. You should really wait for someone you really want. I'm gonna go with that. I've always heard that when the right person comes along, you'll know it. If you're not sure which one you want, that might mean neither of them are right for you. And when the right person comes along, I want to make sure I'm available. Exactly. You're totally right. So, did that answer your question? Hmm, I don't know. I, I think I need more time to decide. Is that okay? It's kind of up to you, right? I... I guess it is! Madison gives you a tight hug and skips over to see Logan and Trip. You join your friends back at the bake sale table. You seem happy. I take it your talk with Madison went well? I'd say so! Look! Zach points to Madison, who is headed towards your table with Trip and Logan, following right behind. Three cupcakes, please, and we're all gonna sign! Really? Thanks. Caitlin passes the sheet around, and Logan, Tripp, and Madison all sign. And here are your cupcakes. Do you want my Madison is strawberry? No, take mine, it's chocolate! Oh my god. The two of them continue to bicker as they walk away. The cross squad, Sebastian walks on stage and speaks into the mic. You hear his voice echoing throughout the buildings. 
Attention, everyone! The Alyssa Griffin concert will begin in 30 minutes. Did you hear that? We gotta get moving. For the next half an hour, you and your friends buckle down and get to work. Of course I'll sign. Zach told me all about your platform. It starts to look like Chris has a chance after all. Congratulations, Darren. You are the 50th person to sign the petition. Awesome! You're the man, Chris! But by the time the concert starts, you're still several signatures short. Sebastian's voice once again rings out through the loudspeakers. Attention, everyone! Please welcome the one, the only, Elisa Griffin! Hello, Hartfell University! Suddenly, pop music starts blasting from the speakers all over the quad. Holy crap, that is loud! I hate to say it, but I think we should go back to the dorms. What did you say? I can't hear you over this music! You point to your friends, mime walking, and point in the direction of your dorm! Everyone nods in agreement. You start packing up the booth when Sebastian appears with a smirk. Leaving so soon? Hey Sebastian, have a snowball. Take that! Whoa! The snowball hits him right in the chest, and he winces. Ouch! How dare you! Yeah? Well, there's plenty more where that came from. Get out of here. Sebastian dusts himself off and stalks back towards the concert. Hey, Happy, do we have any food coloring left over from the frosting? I think I have an idea. Uh, we should. It's in the kitchen. Guys, we still ha we still can save this campaign. Abby, let's go. A few minutes later. Snowballs, come get your snowballs! We've got every color of the rainbow. Totally free if you sign the petition to get Chris's name on the ballot. You catch the attention of a group of students who are leaving the concert. I'll take that snowball. Me too. Soon the whole quad is in an all-out snow war. Ouch! Who did that? Mizumi, look, a distraction. Oof. Gotcha! You're gonna regret that. Hey, it's all fair in love and war! Guys, quit fooling around! We're being overrun here! The tables swarm with people signing Chris's petition and grabbing snowballs. I can't believe this is actually working. Hey guys, look at the stage! You look over to see Alyssa attempting to continue her song in all the chaos. A snowball flies past her. Whoa! People, please, calm down! Can we hit her with one? Zack pulls out his phone. This is going on YouTube! You feel a tab on your shoulder and turn around. Here, Mizumi, take this. Caitlin hands you a huge yellow snowball. Consider an apology for earlier. Use wisely. Oh, a yellow snowball. You look around and scope out your targets. Okay, so hold on. <clears throat> I need to blow my nose. And during that brief momentary lapse. So we're thinking of Becca, Sebastian, or Alyssa. So we already hit Sebastian on the snowball. We... I don't think Becca would really... I think it would get back and, and make Madison laugh, but that's about it. How about let's get her off the stage? Woo! Take that. Ouch! My hair! You've ruined my hair! Who did that? Show yourself. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. Shoot. He <laughs> sprint back to the table before Alyssa can figure it out. It was you. Chris grins at you. Guess who just got the hundred signature? That's awesome. Sebastian is going down. You bet he is. Let's round up the others. I'm getting tired of the cold. Right behind you. <clears throat> You and your friends walk back to the suite. Flush with success, you take the long way to avoid getting hit by any more snowballs. Thanks for everything, you guys. Looks like I'm on the ballot. Chris, Chris, Chris! Chris for president. Heartful student council, here I come. 
You and Caitlin hang back from the group. I really am sorry for the snowball. You'd better be. My shoulder is gonna be bruised for weeks. Aww. Want me to kiss it and make it feel better? Maybe. Caitlin leans in and kisses your shoulder, then presses a gentle kiss to your lips. What, is my lip bleeding? No, that was good for... that was for good measure. You take Aitlin's hand and continue walking. The door is already open when you get back to the dorm. You find a couple waiting inside. Caitlin quickly pulls her hand away from yours. I hope you don't mind that they are ready to let us in before getting cold. Uh, hi? Mom, Dad, this is Mizumi. Mizumi, these are my parents. Hello, Mizumi, I am Pita. And I'm Grace. We've heard so much about you. You have? Is Caitlin finally going to come out to her parents? Find out in Chapter 11 of Freshmen! Oh, and in before anyone goes, How dare you have the stereotypical Asian accent? Kiss my ass? Question mark? <laughs> I actually got shit the first time that I did that, and I gave them kind of accents. <clears throat> because, especially because Caitlin has a normal accent, right? Well, long story short, um, as the books go on, you quickly find out they were not, um, they actually came from, um, across the, the sea. So, just in case you didn't know that, they're not American-born, and even American-born keep the accents, especially when they're raised around those who have accents, even those American-born typically will gain a little bit of the accent, kind of like John Barrymore, who actually, um, speaks quite easily American and sounds like it, but he actually keeps a Scottish accent. Uh, I believe it's Scottish or Irish, or I forget what kind of... But if you watch his YouTube video, he was a little bit loopy on the drugs because he's having his appendix removed, and it, it kind of sounds like this, and his parents, his parents kind of go in and out, and they're actually from there, and they're not, come, they're not native to America. So I thought I'd let you know that, just in case you didn't, just in case you want to give me shit. <laughs> And for me, I can speak all kinds of shit. Um, but that, with that being said, so, hope y'all did enjoy. If you did or didn't, let me know in the comment section below. If you did, also feel free to like and share the video. Feel free to also head down in the description below. You can follow me on social media, or if you want to support my channel and my content at all, that'd be greatly appreciated. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.